please do not forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. When you do, don't forget to click on all. Because if you don't, you might not get notified of all of the videos. So make sure you click on all. And don't forget in the comp in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to all my brothers and sisters in Christ and to all of our lost brothers and sisters in Islam and to anybody else that is listening. Welcome to the Truth Verses. Let us begin in prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, thank you for this day that you have made. Father, we pray that you touch our lives and the lives of the Muslims throughout the world, that you show them the truth, that you bring them to your Son, Jesus, that died on the cross to pay for all of our sins. Lord Father, bless this channel that it does your work that it brings people to your glory, to your Son. We ask this in your Son's most holy name, Yeshua HaMashiach. Just in case if someone wants to make a big deal, this channel is an educational channel, and thus the Fair Use Act is fully engaged. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to all my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, and to our lost brothers and sisters in Islam. Uh, well, today I've got a treat for you. I've said it several times in several of my other videos. And as of yet, no Muslim has challenged that from any of my videos. Well, today... We got someone who uh, uh, appears to be Muslim by how he talks, okay? A Muslim to finally admit that Allah really means the God. So now you can use this information when you're trying to convince the Muslims you are trying to knock some metaphor metaphorically knock some sense into them. I do not promote actually doing the physical knocking, but 
metaphorically knocking some sense into Muslims. So, let's get to the OP. So, here is the OP. Christian denied Allah is their God, but Allah's name written in their Arabic Bible, so blame your Bible scholars. Don't need to blame the Bible scholars. You need to be educated about what the term Allah means. Now, I am very fluent in English. I know some about Greek and Hebrew. Those two are hard languages, but I do know some about both of those. I know very little about Arabic. So little, it can be counted on one hand. But I do know this. Allah translated into English, people. Come on. Just means God or the God. Now, depending on how it is used in the sentence, it can mean either one of the two. So, here is my post. Translate Allah. Eh, well, second thought, I'll translate it for you with the help of several native Arabic native speakers at which that shouldn't have been written that way, but it was. This should be denies. And there should be an is written or is in between these two words. So, just one, just one grammatical mistake, no problem. These guys do a lot of grammatical mistakes. And most of the time I don't, I don't care. I might point them out, but I go on. So, like Christian Prince, Al Fadi, and others, Allah translate just means God or the God. The proper translation is the God, but, <clears throat> but depending on how it is used in the sentence, it can also mean God. It can. Which means that your God does not know what his real name is. After all, and I keep on saying this, God is a title the word God is a title, not a name. So, of course, wherever God is in the Bible, so it will be 
Allah in the Arabic Bible. So it will be Allah. Keep in mind that God is only a title. Right there, I have also mentioned it in the statement, and not an official name. Let's end this. Go to the Arabic Bible to Isaiah 45.5. Attached is the screenshot, and oops, what do we see? And well, and what well, it is apparently that what is seen it is really only that of the Ayala, uh, which is a god, is what someone will say, the hater. I know almost nothing about Arabic, but I do know Allah translated as the God or God. So then it is, it is very possible, like someone mentions a little bit later, that is not Allah. It could also be that they are seeing Allah being mentioned as a pagan god. The Arabic alphabet is really hard for me to read, for me to read. Others might find it easy. Oh. Definitely, for sure, native Arabic speakers will find it easy. So, but let's go ahead and continue. Now here is the English King James translation, and I put it right here. I am the Lord, there is none else, there is no God. Now, someone from a private chat did mention, it depends on which Arabic Bible. A, apparently, the one I have direct access to is not the one that will show as Allah at this point, but others will. So, did Allah just admit that there are other Allah? Your puny excuse that Allah is in the Bible, so Christians and Jews worship the same God? I call it bull, and I still call it bull. 
All right. Let's continue. Let's have all of the comments. So, study Arabic so will not become fool and ignorant. Okay. What is missing? And is this an attack on the character rather than potentially addressing the issue? Let's go on. If then, oh wait a minute, not if, then translate it for us, or are you afraid some native Arabic speaker prove you wrong? And he never translated it. And I'm talking about the whole verse because there is where the difference is going to be with any language. Most words in the American language has more than one meaning. How do you determine which meaning context of the sentence. If someone just says just says the nomination, what are they talking about? But if someone says I went to the bank and they were out of the $20 bill denominations. Now, what does it mean? Very interesting, what do you think? But let's go on. Remember the word Allah, a God, which your arrow pointing out is a common noun, and you can refer to whatever something. Hmm. An incomplete sentence. Allah, a God, and Allah, the God. In Arabic are different. Allah in Arabic language are referring only to the real God. Even you go around Arabian Peninsula for research. <clears throat> this one has a lot of replies. Your Allah is idols, nameless and anonymous God, is what this guy said. And he posted this meme. Allah is a pre-Islamic name corresponding to the Babylonian bell. And this meme gives 
references. So if you want to do a screenshot of it and then reuse it, go ahead. So let's go ahead and close that out. Now that you've had plenty of time to do print screen. And let's move on. Please, what's the name of the real God? The man is not Arabic speaking, so he is ignorant of the language. I don't know who that is talking to, but yeah, I know very little about Arabic. I have to use, I have to use the Prophet Google Translate to help. Hmm, just like every Muslim is ignorant of the Greek and Hebrew. Okay. Ignorant. Now this is going to come up again. Ignorant. Saud Shaki. Saud Shaki. Saud Shaki down here. I teach Muslims and still they do not believe our scriptures say. Instead of calling names, why don't you help me understand where the problem is? Now, a bigger problem. There is a bigger problem. That you do not see, even though I'm partially wrong, okay, I am going to admit that, yeah, okay, maybe I am partially wrong here. And I apologize. I'm still partially right. For that in which I pointed out is half of the word Allah is God, where the word Allah is, okay, where the word Allah is the God, the first half of the statement to make to become Muslim translated is there is no God that of the Allah, but the God, which is Allah, okay? Allah, God, Allah, the God. One is without the definitive article And the other is with the definitive article, which is the. Still talking about God. That is why I said earlier, depending on how it is used in the sentence, Allah could mean also just 
God. Oops. Yes, the only difference between God and the God is the definitive article. Yet the question still remains, since God is only a title, what is Allah's name? We Christians can look at the Hebrew, the name of the Father, pronounced Elah, Yet, in English translations, it is given the title, God. And you see this name in Daniel 3.25. The Son of God. Go to the Hebrew, and oops, what do you see? This word right here. And the Son, Yeshua, I don't like the overuse and abuse of the title God. And that is why I look to the Greek and Hebrew for the actual name. That's weird. What am I hearing? Hmm. So, and he then replies back, I haven't called anyone name. Interesting. I wonder what you call that. Interesting. What you say? I haven't called anyone names. All I said is that the word Allah can be used by all Arabic-speaking people as it refers to the generic God. And right here it is. Saud Shawiki have just admitted the term Allah can be referred to as any god. Bravo, Mr. Muslim. You just admitted what I've been saying for the last couple of years. And, well, this guy is basically saying the same thing. Your arrow is pointing to the word Allah, not Allah. 
Well, again, that could be possible. Yeah, I didn't get to watch the whole game. I got to watch the last couple of minutes whenever Washington beat that one school in Norman. <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed that last couple of minutes. If that is the case, I can probably find other verses that does. That will take some extra time of which is on the back burner. See, trying to find other scripture that proves the point is just not, nope. Not algebra, but can prove that the term Allah in an Arabic Bible also refers to false gods. But that's on the back burner. I'm not interested in doing to that what I did. And I still do detail study on Bible prophecy. And I also do some other study in Islam in the English translations. I really don't deal too much with the Arabic what it all means. It's like, so, oops. But regardless, you just admitted that Allah translated just means the God. Thank you for admitting that truth. And so there are two Muslims that just admitted that Allah just means the God. Okay. If this year all predates the inception of Islam is so that it's a natural meaning of the word God or God. So it is an Arabic word that means God. The means there's no name given to your own God, which differs him from others. And this is a Christian getting into the conversation. I don't mind as long as they can contribute. There's been some Christians that would that would then butt in and it's like and why are you going off into that direction with this conversation? I 
Yes. Except you want to say Islam found the Arabic language. God, whether God, gods, or a God, the God, etc., is a natural word for a deity or object that is worshipped and not a particular name. He is basically, a, yeah, um, his name is Victor. He is basically saying the same thing that I said earlier. God is a title. So, do your research and bring out the particular name of your Allah. The thing is, Muslims can't because there is no name of Allah. They just call him Allah. That's good. All right. Okay, I think uh, and I goofed, so let me wait a minute, let me first do something here. This was actually meant for someone else. So I'm going to delete and go reply to this guy. There. And and well, you can pause it too, then read this. I'm I, I am not going to read it. This this conversation is coming to an end. So, someone did say, "Well said, man. They're so thick." That's what makes up most of them. Christian Prince is awesome at this. So we finally get two Muslims and a few other 
and a few other Christians pitching in, and they finally admit that Jesus is God. Depending on context, it could just be God, and it could be the God. So now when you talk to other Muslims about what does Allah mean, you have ammunition. The Muslims used to be able to get away with takia very easily. But now that we are learning more and more about what is actually happening, it's like, okay, we see your lies. The lies are no longer helping when we can see right through them. And so now they have to admit things that they have been hiding. It is a that of the um The shake uh, have had to be online and admit that he's been wrong about things. And if you don't understand why I've called him shake ketchup which is, I believe, his actual name. It, it, well, in, in including his title, Sheikh is a title. Sheikh Uthman You might want to watch a few videos that Hatun Tosh did whenever she went into the alleged story of him being stabbed. Alleged stabbed. A lot of people think that it was just ketchup. And so that's why he is being called shake ketchup. Right. So you now have a couple of Muslims. Boom. Use their names and uh, use them well. But but this and this Muslim have have came right out and have admitted Allah is the God. But now, what if the sentence put the word Allah with the with the definitive article? Um, But the Allah of Islam is the real God. Okay, let's let, let's let's just use that as an example of putting the definitive article in a sentence. But the Allah of Islam da 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 da. Okay. Wait a minute. 
if Allah translated is the God, then what did it read as but the the God? That is why I mentioned earlier, depending on how it was used in the sentence, it can be God or the God. And in this instance, it would just be God. Either which way you look at it, it is still talking about God. Now, earlier today, Christian Prince this here, was it this one? I think it was this one. Where is he? And that was earlier today by Christian Prince. <clears throat> but this conversation has been going on now for a couple of days. So I don't know what the deal is. Okay. A day ago, a day ago or two, it was about to become two days ago here in about another hour or two. But It seems like that the same argument begins to float all over. This time it was about, well, the name of Allah. Sometimes it is about other topics, but it seems to start to happen that it's the same argument floating around on all of the Facebook pages. Which is why when I type out a when I type out a statement, I go ahead and copy it and save it. So that as it comes up again, I can just do a paste. Okay. I have done made a statement on this, so I will just paste whatever statement I made and go on. All right, guys. I hope this helps. Thank you and have a great day. Listen, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Do not think that we hate you because we do this. If we really hated you, we would not be doing this at all. We would be off doing something else, and we would just let you burn in the lake of fire. Okay? Simple as that, Mr. and Miss Muslim. Simple as that.
instead, not only does Matthew 28, 16 through 20 calls us to go out unto all the world, but as a Christian, it pulls at our heart. that many will still die and go to the lake of fire. Just like there are only two sides to the coin, heads and tails, there are only two places you can go, heaven or the lake of fire. In your religion, it is called paradise and hell. Okay. Just like in Islam, there are certain things you do need to do. But in Christianity, you have to recognize the key element that Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, the only begotten Son, John 3.16, have came to earth, took possession of a human body, grew up among us as a human, went to the cross for our sins, took the penalty of our sins, and ended the old covenant. See, there are two things he did at the cross. Most Christians does not realize there were two things he did at the cross. He bore our sins which and took the penalty for our sins and he ended the covenant. Or, yeah, he have ended the covenant, the old, what well, what is now known as the Old Covenant, which is why it is now called the Old Testament. Okay. And brought in a new covenant, which is why it's now called the New Testament. Oh, excuse me, the New Testament. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. And that by accepting this, you become an adopted child of the father Theos. Okay, by accepting all this, you become an adopted child of the father Theos. See, in Islam, you are only an Abdul, which means slave. In Christianity, you become an adopted child of the Most High. How awesome is that? How awesome is that? To go from being an Abdul 
to being a brother and sister to the most powerful king in the universe. Let me actually rephrase that. To being the child of the most powerful king of the universe. To being the brother and sister of the most powerful prince, which is Jesus Christ of the universe. See, if we hated you, Again, we would just let you be and just let you burn in hell. We would just let you burn in the lake of fire. Who cares? Well, I for one care. I for one care and others like me that does videos like this care. You may think that we are making fun just for making fun of your religion. And yeah, I'm sure a couple are, but most of us are trying to get you to wake up out of the coma that you are in, out of the brainwashing that you have endured. We are trying to get you to wake up. You might be saying, well, I was brainwashed too. No, I was not. Not by Christianity. You are brainwashed and you are in a cult. Let me ask you this, Mr. and Ms. Muslim, because here is a sure sign of a cult. If you leave Islam today, what would happen to you? A death threat would be put on to your head. And if you are in an Islamic country, and if they find out, it would be carried out. That is a cult. Or you would be shunned in a non-Islamic controlled country. Just ask the apostate the just ask the apostate prophet. He is no longer a Muslim, and he has been receiving death threats ever since he has left. Ask a lot of these other Muslims or ex-Muslims that has left Islam. They have continued to receive death threats. There are ex-Muslims in Muslim-controlled countries right now that has to keep it a secret because of that death threat. That's only one sign of being in a cult. It is time to get out. Even if you cannot openly declare it, quietly get out. And then declare your heart to the Lord Jesus. I truly believe that he understands that you cannot openly declare right now.
but do something about your false religion and come to the Lord Jesus. He's waiting for you. Come now before it is too late. Okay, what must I do to be saved? God the Father, Theos, did this part. He sent his only begotten Son, at which, let me point out, that the Son did so of his own free will, okay, that that of Theos sent his only begotten son, John 3, 16, to one, bring an end to the old covenant, which is why the Old Testament is called the Old Testament. Testament and covenant are actually synonyms and thus brought in a new covenant because in the Old Testament, in order to cover sins, they had to sacrifice lambs. Oops, where have we heard that term in the New Testament? Oh yeah, John, John the Baptist called Jesus the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Okay? So, therefore, Jesus, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah, sheds his holy blood to atone for our sins. He paid the penalty for our sins. Okay. So now And then, and, and then the Holy Spirit is sent afterwards. But what do we do before we can believe anything we have got to hear? And here is but just a couple of mini verses in the Bible that says we need to hear the gospel. And then we need to believe it. We need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and that he came to pay the penalty for our sins and that we are to accept it. Now, I think I consider him as, well, I actually consider him as a friend, and I hope that he considers me as a friend too, which is why when he did a video on Things like this steps to salvation type means. He did not give my name on that video, but I think he was in a way pointing me out as well as others. But here is the thing. Every single point on this 
has scripture to back it up. Now, absolutely, you have to hear. Absolutely, you have to believe because one of the verses is, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. At, at the congregation that he preaches, he boasts that he have baptized. Oh, excuse me. He boasts that he have baptized over 200 people. So I know that he still believes in the baptism as well. So, hear, believe, and baptize. Now, there is arguments of when do we repent and confess. Now, whether if you want to have this red line here, that's on you. If you want to have the red line here, this is what has been believed for a very long time. Now, repent of sins, I personally, my personal opinion at which it does does not count can be put after baptism because we still sin even though we've been baptized because what is in the our father's prayer Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Repent of sins. Okay. You are actually being baptized for the forgiveness of sins. So why have this be before this? So, yeah. This can go after because we still sin after we are baptized. So, yeah, the repent of sin, personal opinion, should be after baptism. And remain faithful. We do those things, and I think I did a video on that. If not, I will do one. But we do those things because we are saved, not to be saved. There is a big difference. If you read Ephesians 2, verse 10, see, a lot of people want to quote Ephesians 2, verse 8 and 9. We are saved by faith through through grace alone. Woohoo! And want to stop at verse 9 as if there's a brick wall between verse 9 and 10. And no, you got to go on. Verse 10 then goes on to explain then we are called to do good works. Even though our good works according to the Father is like filthy rags, he still calls us to do them. What did I just say? Yes, even though our good works are like filthy rags, he still calls us to do them.
Okay, so therefore, regardless where you want to put this line, whether here or over here, regardless, every single one of these have scriptural reference, period. One of them being believe and is baptized, not or be baptized, and means you've got to do them both. This, this same preacher believes we cannot lose our salvation. Well, unfortunately, I've got some bad news for you. Yes, we can. Read Revelation chapters 2 and 3. Okay, but here are the steps of salvation. One of the things we are called to do to remain faithful is to congregate to worship together. Uh, another one is to be a cheerful giver. When I do the video on it, at which today's date is June 25th, 2022, so look back in late June of 2022 for this video or maybe even earlier for the explanation of what it means to remain faithful. As a matter of fact, hold on, I will look to see if I have done one. Okay. It looks like, yes, I did. Are we saved by works, part one and part two? I was seeing that it was taking so long. And I was not even halfway through. So I did a part one and part two. Here is the thing, whenever we preachers talk about the importance of us Christians doing good works, some of you want to say why that is legalism. It isn't legalism. If it is in the Bible, so then don't even go there. If it's in the Bible, that is what Thales calls us to do. Watch those two videos before you say anything, because I will likely delete your comment.
but this is what it means to be saved. So, when are you Muslims going to get it? There is a problem. No, not a. There are several problems, potentially counting into the hundreds of problems. about Islam and I don't know if I will have the time to cover them all instead why don't you come to the one that says in John fourteen six, I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the Father except by me. These are Jesus' words. You can't get to the Father by any other means. Not by me, not by Hatun, not by David Wood, not by Dr. Al-Fadi, not by Joel Osteen, not by anybody else that you can think of, not even through your Imam or Muhammad. The only way to heaven is by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died and paid the penalty for our sins. Mark eleven twenty eight says, Come unto me, all, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, at which weary and labor means the same thing, and I will give you rest. Jesus wants to give you rest and peace, peace knowing, knowing that you are going to go to heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Did you catch that? Believe in Jesus. Become baptized. And, and put your total faith in in Jesus. Quran says 354 and 830 that Allah is the best of deceivers. If he's the best of deceivers, how do you know he is not deceiving you? Think about that. If Allah is the best of deceivers as 354 and 830 tells us that he is because Allah admits to it. How can you be assured he is not lying to you? In 46 verse 9 of the Quran, Muhammad says that he does not know of his salvation and therefore cannot guarantee anybody else's. Wait a minute. Think about this Mr. and Miss Muslim. Muhammad was the best example of a Muslim, and yet he does not know of his salvation. Jesus, the only begotten Son of the Father. Have came to earth. 
willingly just so he can pay for the penalty of sin. Are you ready to be a Christian? Jesus is waiting, but there isn't much time left. The end is drawing near. And you don't want to be left behind. When you are ready, I know of many Christians that would love to help you be saved, and I am one of them. We are not here to hate you. If we were, if we did hate you, we wouldn't be doing what we are doing. We would just let you be and keep the gospel to ourselves. Instead, Jesus said, there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place. We all can live in heaven. We just need to accept. We just need to accept his invitation. Contact me when you are ready to give up Islam. Thank you and have a great day. And don't forget in the in the description area, please consider contributing to this particular ministry, either through Patreon or else through the PayPal. Both links are in the description box.